Confessions 21. So I seized eagerly upon the venerable writings inspired by your Holy Spirit, especially those of the Apostle Paul. At one time it had seemed to me that he sometimes contradicted himself and that the purport of his words did not agree with the evidence of the law and the prophets. But these difficulties now disappeared once and for all. I saw clearly that his sober discourse pointed to one meaning only, and I learned to rejoice with awe in my heart. I began to read and discovered that whatever truth I had found in the Platonists was set down here as well, and with it there was praise for your grace bestowed. For St. Paul teaches that he who sees ought not to boast as though what he sees and even the power by which he sees had not come to him by gift. For whatever powers he has, did they not come to him by gift? By the gift of grace, he is not only shown how to see you, who are always the same, but is also given the strength to hold you. By your grace too, if he is far from you and cannot see you, he is enabled to walk upon the path that leads him closer to you, so that he may see you and hold you. For even if a man inwardly applauds God's disposition, how is he to resist that other disposition in his lower self, which raises war against the disposition of his conscience, so that he is handed over as a captive to that disposition towards sin, which his lower self contains? For you have right on your side, O Lord, but we are sinners that have wronged and forsaken you. All is amiss with us. We are bowed down by your chastisement. In justice we have been delivered to the author of sin, the prince of death, because he has coaxed us to make our wills conform with his, for he has never taken his stand upon your truth. What is man to do in his plight? Who is to set him free? from a nature thus doomed to death. Nothing else than the grace of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was begotten by you to be co-eternal with yourself and whom you made when first you went about your work. In him the prince of this world found no crime worthy of death. Yet he slew him, and thus the decree made to our prejudice was cancelled. None of this is contained in the Platonists' books. The pages have not the mean of the true love of God. They make no mention of the tears of confession or of the sacrifice that you will never disdain, a broken spirit, a heart that is humbled and contrite. Nor do they speak of the salvation of your people, the city adorned like a bride, the foretaste of your spirit, or the chalice of our redemption. In them no one sings, no rest has my soul but in God's hands, to him I look for deliverance. I have no other stronghold, no other deliverer but him. Safe in his protection, I fear no deadly fall. In them no one listens to the voice which says, Come to me, all you that labour. They disdain his teaching because he is gentle and humble of heart. For you have hidden all this from the wise and revealed it to little children. It is one thing to descry the land of peace from a wooded hilltop, and unable to find the way to it, struggle on through trackless wastes, where traitors and runaways, captained by their prince, who is lion and serpent in one, lie in wait to attack. It is another thing to follow the high road to that land of peace, the way that is defended by the care of the heavenly commander. Here there are no deserters from heaven's army to prey upon the traveller, because they shun this road as a torment. It was wonderful how these truths came home to me when I read the least of your apostles, and the thought of your works had set my heart trembling 